In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at HDR Pro inside of Photoshop CS5. HDR Pro is the totally revamped version of HDR that's inside of Photoshop. Now, before you, if you watch the tutorial that I've done or, or many others have done, we've always said that while there is HDR in Photoshop and while it can do HDR, it isn't that good of HDR, so if you wanted to do something really good, then you've had to venture out into other applications. <clears throat> and now with Photoshop CS5, this has all changed, and HDR Pro is the new HDR. So in CS5, you can do two bits of HDR. You can do HDR Pro, which we're going to take a look at today, or you can do HDR Toning, which is just affecting one single image. And there's a tutorial for that too. If you want to see how that works, go ahead and have a look at that. But now it's HDR Pro, so let's go to the file menu, come down to automate, and let's go to merge to HDR Pro. Now previously this said merge to HDR only, now it says merge to HDR Pro. So I'm going to select files, I'm going to go ahead and browse, and I, I have a folder here set up that I'm just going to drag in here called HDR Pro and I've got four images in here. And these are just sample images. The sample images that actually comes with Photoshop. So in your sample in your Photoshop folder in your sample images, you've got this merge to HDR folder which has these four images in them. So I'm gonna click open. I'm gonna click OK. Now this is gonna leave Photoshop working for a little bit while it opens all the images and then merges it together into the previous one. And once it's gone ahead and done some work, we can then go ahead and work on the tone mapping. Now it's important to to actually differentiate tone mapping from the process which is the HDR itself. So the HDR is basically putting all of this dynamic range into one photo. So it contains all of this exposure information. Well the tone mapping bit is the end result that this gives and what we see. So here we get this huge dialog box. Let's see if I can make this any smaller. Just give me a moment here. Apparently not. So let's see. We can see almost everything in this. Let's go ahead and hide the dock here. We can see everything important. At the bottom there are some percentage controls here that we cannot see right now. And of course the done button. But we can always hit enter. Okay, so here we've got the merged HDR Pro, and inside of here we have presets. So if you watch the HDR toning, this is the same tone mapping preset. So we've got flat, we've got monochromatic artistic, which is one of these effects in overdrive again. We've got monochromatic high contrast, low contrast, monochromatic, which looks good. More saturation is again one of these surreal effects. Then we got photorealistic high contrast, photorealistic low contrast, photorealistic, saturated, surrealistic high contrast, which is again very surrealistic, low contrast, and also just surrealistic, which is extreme. Now, I want you, you can use one of these as a starting point if you want, so in this case, even the monochromatic look good. I think photorealistic high contrast had the the most that I want to use here. You can start with the default if you don't like either of these. So you've got the edge glow, which is basically how much the edges here in the frame, all of the edges that it detects, how much they should be um, in contrast and how much they should glow uh, in essence. So you see here that it gets a fair bit lighter as I increase the radius and strength here. Next, under Tone and Detail, we've got all the settings on the white point, which is the gamma setting. And we can go ahead and modify it. So we're basically telling it that this is white and that that isn't white. Then we have the exposure, which is the overall exposure of the image. We've then got the detail. And this is where you can go in and make it extreme, which is basically contrast, or you can make it really soft. So something 
closer to zero here. I find works best. Or if just a little more, if we're going for this realistic effect. Next we've got shadow, which basically says lighten up shadows or darken down shadows. In this case I probably want to darken them down and the highlights too so I can get back the sky here. Then I've got color so I can increase the vibrance here. I'm probably going to set the saturation at zero because I don't want it to be saturated but I want the vibrance which are basically the colors that you want to enhance here. I want to increase those. And then I've also got the option of a tone curve so I can go ahead here make any classical change. This is where you can really work with the contrast if you want. If you don't just leave the tone curve just as it is. So once you move ahead here you may want to click the top flyout menu here and save this as a preset. And then you can just give it your own name and you're gonna save it down. You can also choose if you want to go right down if you want to retain it in 32-bit which is basically setting the white point preview only if we're in 16 or 8 bit, this is where all of the settings that we just did will apply. We have a couple of methods here and modes. Now you probably want to leave it in local adoption 99.99999% of the time. You ne really never want to leave there because this is where you get all of these good controls. When you're done, all you do is click enter and it's going to create and it's going to finish up and merge the finished file. And in this case, because I changed the mode to 8-bit, we're going to get an 8-bit file. Normally you want to click 16-bit, that's just a slip of me there. So you want to retain the most information as possible, even once you've tone mapped the image. So all I'm going to do now is going to let Photoshop render out and convert the image to HDR here. And we'll soon see the final result here once it is finished there. And, and there we go. So if I go ahead here and I bring up the individual images, you can see here that if, let's see, let's have them open here. Now this is a good image, definitely a good image for, uh, for the room, but if we compare these two, you're going to see that what we have here is basically the detail and color of the room with the outside so we can see the sky, we can see the tree and the house outside. So I think this is a very nice HDR. It's certainly better than Photoshop could do at all before. So you go ahead, jump in and try out the new HDR features in Photoshop CS5.